Hey, what's going on? Johnny the Gamer here, and if you're new to this channel, I am a big fan of the PSP. I'm a PSP system enthusiast. I'm an amateur collector of the games for the system, and today I thought I'd share with you 10 hidden gems, or at least what I consider hidden gems for the system. So let's check it out. Kingdom of Paradise is an action RPG where you play as a character named Shinbu who has been exiled from his clan and there are five different clans in this game and it starts off with a disciple of one of these clans warning you that all of the other clans are actually getting wiped out by this very powerful clan called the Kirin. So right off the bat, this game has a great story. One of the first things I noticed in this game were the graphics. I got lost in some of these backgrounds. They just looked so cool. Look at that view. That is so cool. I feel like I'm in China. So another thing I like about this game is that it definitely doesn't hold your hand. You have to progress the story by just exploring and talking to people. Like for example, there's this character in the game who had a red robe on, and I kept talking to him and he didn't want anything to do with me, but turns out later on in the story, he was actually an important character that I had to go back to, and I was glad that I was paying attention to the story because I knew where he was and who he was to go talk to him, and that actually enabled me to continue the story. Let's talk to this guy. Scholar, as you can see, I'm reading something. Please don't bother me. I appreciate your clarity, sir. I will get out of your face. Shinbu, why don't you go and see that scholar? He might have a kempu you can use. The scholar, that's right, red guy. Red guy. There he is, red guy. Excuse me, are you Kairoku? I'm trying to make something like a sightseer's guide to Oka. And while we're on the subject of story and immersion, let me just say these cutscenes draw you in. They're very entertaining. Like, I felt like I was watching one of my favorite anime shows in this cutscene. I was so invested. Ridiculous. <laughs> cough, cough. <laughs> you become weak, old man. Do you really want to hold on to that facade. weak, disease-ridden old body so badly? Ooh, shots fired. I actually really enjoyed the combat in this game. It has two special types of uh, combat that you can sort of customize and play around with. They are called Chi Arts and Bugay Scrolls. And the cool thing about the Chi Arts is that you discover them slowly as you play the game throughout. Here's my reaction when I found my first Chi Art. Ooh, what is this? Oh crap, what is this? Whoa, dude, whoa! Super Saiyan, holy crap. That is awesome. Oh, man. You learned Genbu Chi Arts. Nice. Now, I'm not gonna go into a whole lot of detail with these Chi Arts, but I will say that they have some pretty cool, like there's a skill tree that you can customize with it, so that's pretty cool. There's also a really cool sword move where you chuck your sword like a boomerang and it comes back and hits people. Okay, check this out. You throw it that way, you go this way, boom, it hits them. <laughs> Love it. This music grows on you. Ooh, geyser. What is this, dude? Let's check this out. Does this elevate me? Aw. Dude, if this was a Mario game, I'd be like on another level right now. The leveling up in this game also feels really significant and satisfying. You get a little shot of dopamine every time you see that little animation with the level up. And the increase in health is actually pretty significant each level too. And I also, I'll say that it's pretty hard to level up. You have to fight a lot of enemies. Speaking of enemies, there are some pretty awesome bosses in this game. I'm really excited to continue the story and, and the rest of this game because I haven't beat it yet. But if there's more bosses like this guy, I am looking forward to it. But yeah, the bosses so far, super fun. Dang, dude, you look like Satan had 
a love child with Wendy's spokesperson, dude. With Kingdom of Paradise being such an early release in the PSP's life, I wanted it since it came out and I'm so glad I finally picked it up and especially I get to talk about it on my channel because it turned out to be a really fun game. And before we move on to the next game, I just wanted to leave you with a couple little fun parts of this gameplay I recorded. Come on! Oh! No! I'm trying to eat my Chipotle! Please, feel free to join us. I'm sorry, but... You have our deepest thanks. We accept your kind offer. <laughs> Dang, Shinbu wants to tap that <gasps> dude. She was like, but, but, and he was like, we'll accept your kind offer to sleep here at camp. Thank you, sir. Warhammer 40,000 Squad Command is a turn-based tactics game set in the Warhammer 40,000 universe. And to be honest, I'm not familiar with this franchise, but after I played it, it reminded me a lot of Mario plus Rabbids. So you've got like the top-down camera, you've got like I think it's six guys that you can customize their loadout with, you can give each one a different amount of ammo to take with you on these missions, and there's actually 15 single-player and nine multiplayer missions in this game, so not too bad. I mean, I was really getting into this game when I was playing it. Prepare to die, scum. Wait, how do I... It's not showing the little red dot. Boom! Chaos Space Marine killed. Ah, yeah. And then you hit select for the map to plan your next attack. And here we go. Oh, dude! They wrecked me. <laughs> that was not very strategic. Oh, my gosh. That's right, dude. There might be only three of us, but we have a lot of uh, fight left in us, bro. This game has over 20 ranged and close combat weapons, so there's plenty to unlock and have fun with. I did learn a lot playing this game, just, you know, how you can destroy some environments to shoot your enemies to get through to them. And uh, things like friendly fire where it was on at one turn and I accidentally shot my own teammate. That was kind of funny. Oh, I can shoot him from here, though. Oh, this guy can shoot him. Well, in that case, I'm using my shoddy. Oh, friendly fire is on. Oh, my gosh. I just realized that... Oh, well. One of the things in the game that I really started to rely on was my map. Every time I took a turn before I moved one of my guys, I would look at the map and it actually helped me out so much that I would spot guys on the map that I didn't even see on the battlefield. Like right here, for example. Where is he? Oh, I, sometimes you can't see these guys. He's right there. Boom. Take that guy out too while you're at it, bruh. Well, that does it for 40,000 Warhammer Squad Command. This game pleasantly surprised me, so I recommend picking it up and checking it out, especially if you like this genre. Ape Escape Academy is an addition to the Ape Escape series, but in this game there is no platforming that you would find in games like Ape Escape on the loose, so Academy is nothing but mini-games. Similar to WarioWare for the 3DS, although I am hesitant to compare it to that game because Academy isn't nearly as good, it has 45 mini-games. Now, not all of them are really fun, but there are some good ones for sure. Show them the real power shot. I will. What? Oh, I see what's happening. I just lost a goal. <laughs> Blocked it. What? Oh, here it comes. Get it ready. Get ready. Get get ready. Get ready. Nice. Oh, nice. That other monkey just went in there and he's like, boom. Oh, oh I missed it. Uh. Ooh, go 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 go. Ah, oh, he couldn't get there in time. I gotta remember to control the direction. Holy cow. Nice. Oops. I prematurely. Ooh. Yes. Oh no 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 no. Not good. It's coming back. Oh, how? These are intense mini games. I love these. So in this game, there's a curriculum that you were enrolled in that spans over six years, and your goal is to graduate the course. 
each of your six instructors is a villain from a previous game, which I think is pretty cool and makes me want to explore the other games in the series to check out what it's like to go up against them instead of have them as your instructor. So there is a mechanic in the game that I enjoy personally, but I don't think everyone else will agree, and that is the tic-tac-toe system while you're playing the minigames. So your instructor randomly assigns you to which minigame you'll be playing next, and if you win or lose that game, it will determine if you get an X or an O on the grid made up of nine minigames. And once you win the game of tic-tac-toe, you can progress to a higher grade. The part that's challenging is that in most games, most minigames, you will only get one life to win the game. So let's talk about the multiplayer real quick. In short, to play multiplayer, you will be using one PSP console and passing it to one another, because to my knowledge, there are only four minigames to play together wirelessly, so that doesn't seem worth it to, you know, link your PSPs up, try to figure it out, but me personally, I would enjoy passing the PSP console to a friend and watching them try to beat the minigames, so it's not that big a deal for me personally. Seems like the main complaint about this game is the loading times and the quality of the controls in the minigames. And I pretty much agree, some of the game's controls are ridiculously slow and really take away from the fun because you're just trying to figure out how to control the monkeys, so it really kind of bogs down the gameplay. But that being said, I still think it's a great hidden gem to play. So if you like minigames, for sure pick this one up and give it a try. And let me know what you think in the comments of this game if you've tried it. Hand it off, hand it off. Run back, run back. Oh. Woo. <gasps> Why? Okay. Did I do it? Yes! Lego Pirates of the Caribbean on the PSP isn't all that much of a hidden gem, but if you think of great games to play on the PSP, it might be one of the last ones that comes to mind with all the other amazing titles for the handheld. One cool thing about this game is that it features characters and locations from the first four movies. It was released alongside the fourth movie installment of the franchise on Stranger Tides in 2011. One downside to LEGO Pirates on the PSP is that there is no multiplayer which the LEGO games do excel at, so you will be playing solo, which is fine with me personally, I'm not going out of my way to get somebody to play this game with me. This game has plenty to offer, you can switch between characters on the fly, figure out puzzles, there are some quick time events when fighting other characters, but for any seasoned gamer, or for that matter any noob, could annihilate the on-screen prompts, because they're really easy. Alright, we're gonna tap X repeatedly. That was super easy. Come on now. It could have been easier than or harder than that. Also super easy. Maybe they'll get harder. And just the overall aesthetic of this game is very charming. The cutscenes are actually pretty fun to watch. A lot of times in games, I'll just skip the cutscenes altogether, admittedly. <laughs> But not in this game, they really captured giving you a sense of familiarity to the movies, which is fun because it gives you a sense that you're in the world of Jack Sparrow and Elizabeth Swan playing through the movies and having a different new experience in the Pirates universe. And the game not only has a lot of playable characters, but each one of them will give you a different ability to use in the game. For example, Jack Sparrow has a compass that helps you find hidden items, Davy Jones and any members of his crew can breathe underwater, Elizabeth Swan can jump higher than the other characters. What I like about this game is that there is a ton of stuff to unlock. From the mini playable characters to unlocking free play mode, which allows you to explore more of the areas in greater depth. There are also little mini-games where if you succeed you will receive a red brick, which are collectible items in the game along with a slew of other types of items you will want to collect if you want to 100% this puppy. No, no, not not that puppy, that's, that's not what I meant. That reminds me, you can play as a puppy. It's pretty awesome, you can dig up treasure and break into prison cells and all kinds of fun stuff. And who doesn't love this legendary scene from the movie? and the Disneyland rides where the, you know, the prisoners are trying to coax the dog to get them the key. So I was just blown away that this even exists in this game. You can play as the dog that's retrieving the key. So it was just a cool little part of the game I really enjoyed. All right, I have a bit of a confession to make. As I said in the beginning of this particular game in the video, 
this game isn't much of a hidden gem at all, come to find out, but I'm a lazy piece of crap and I didn't want to change out all the gameplay and all the work that I had already edited with the footage, so I chose to leave this one in, so I hope you can forgive me. It might still be a hidden gem to some of you. I think I was just thinking more in terms of what I consider hidden gems and this one was not on my radar. So yeah, I'll just try to be more selective in the future with my hidden gems and try to make them more abstract. So yeah, but anyway, I hope you enjoyed it anyway and let's move on to the final game. Lord of Arcana is an action role-playing game that was developed by Access Games and published by Square Enix. When you first play it, you might notice it shares similarities with games like Monster Hunter and Fantasy Star Portable, among others. It's similar to Monster Hunter with the way the quests are set up. You will start out with a few easy quests, and as you complete more quests, more difficult ones will be unlocked. The game has six different weapon classes. I personally enjoy the Battle Axe, but mainly just because it is the most powerful weapon currently in my inventory. So it's nice to have a variety when you're out slaying goblins. This game has battles that are initiated when you come into physical contact with the enemy. I don't mind this mechanic, but it can be frustrating if you just want to walk up and start wailing on your foes, but instead you're met with a load screen that takes you to an arena to battle before the combat starts. I find it difficult to learn the timing of the enemy attacks in this game. It's not turn-based, it is still an action RPG, but it's so enjoyable when you learn their moves and overcome your enemies. And although the game is grindy, I feel that it rewards you pretty sufficiently with plenty of neat items to use in the future quests. Oh yeah, we got a potion and a searchable juice! Oh, I can't pick up the searchable juice. Because I'm already full of searchable juices. The bosses in this game are difficult. You will have to learn the patterns of the attacks to a T, or you will die. And you certainly have to gather a lot of items that will help you during the fight, also, you want to make sure you are a high enough level to actually defeat the boss. Hey, I'm getting good at this. Oh, he's all weakened out. Suck it. Okay, get out. Get out. Oh. Run, 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 Johnny. Oh. Yeah, that's right. You still ugly. What did I do to you besides look fabulous? Oh, dear biscuits. Sweet biscuits and gravy. No, you bad bear. No, you bad bear. This isn't where I want to be. I'm getting the heck out of here. You bad bear. What are you doing here? You bad bear. It's just an ongoing conversation. He's not even a bear. Of course, I have to mention how frustrating it is with the camera controls. Not having a second analog stick on the PSP can be really annoying sometimes, but what can you do? I can't control the camera properly because there's no dual thumbsticks because this PSP is plagued. So unlike LEGO Pirates of the Caribbean, the on-screen prompts in this game are more challenging and way more stylized, almost similar to some God of War games. I did it. Oh no, I didn't. Melee duel. What? Oh hell yeah, quick time attacks. Ah, square. S nice, dude. That's so cool. Look at these stylish matrix moves. That was cool. The story of the game isn't anything to write home about. The world is called Horodin, in which there is a ancient stone called Arcana that holds a ton of magical power, so obviously you're trying to find the Arcana Stone to become the most powerful being that Horodin has ever seen. I like the hub area where you can enhance weapons and armor, store valuable items, buy items from the shop. Also, you can craft items from materials that you've obtained while completing quests. Overall, this game is worth giving a try. You'll most likely really enjoy it like I did. That does it for this video though, thank you for watching, and remember if you want to try out any of these games I have some affiliate links to Amazon in the description, so if you do purchase any of them you will be supporting my channel monetarily, which will help me continue make to make more content and better quality content in the future. So thanks again, and also of course make sure you subscribe if you enjoyed this, I really can't wait to get started on making the next video.
And of course, with more subscriptions and views, not only does that help me move towards my goal of monetizing my channel, but it also lights a fire under my butt to get started on more content. So thanks again. I know I keep saying it, but for real, this was a lot of fun and I will see you in the next video.